historic day for us, breaking ground on the new facility. Um, couldn't be more excited about it. Uh, this facility has been great for us, but um, the new one's, I think, going to really uh, set a standard, and uh, that's what we're about here, and uh, setting that standard for our players, folks that work for us, and, and our fans. So, um, again, we're excited about it. Happy to take any questions. What, what, do you, what's, what are you most excited about for this project, just in terms of once you're actually in the building, like what, what do you think the biggest change will be for the organization? So, uh, you know, Kerry coined the phrase when we first bought the team, we want to be the best team to play for, work for, and cheer for. This really gets at the first two of those. And for the players, right now they have three different buildings they walk to. This is going to bring that all together, uh, create a much larger locker room, upgrade the sports performance areas. So I think for the players, it's going to be terrific. Uh, for the folks that work for us, it's going to, we're going to bring a lot of people down from the stadium that are working there, getting everybody together in one building, we think will create a more collaborative environment that helps us reach our goals. When did, when did this idea come about and uh, who came up with this idea? Uh, it came up when uh, Chip Conway, our VP of Operations, came to me and he was talking about some upgrades we were going to need to make to keep this facility uh, you know, up to par, and it, I was looking at it, well, you know, it was a few million dollars, but it was each season it was going up. And at the same time, we had a player survey come out that talked about, you know, our, the size of our locker room. And, and so then we started saying, well, instead of just modif upgrading that, could we modify it, make it a little bigger? That was going to be challenging. Finally, that turned into maybe we put it over here. And then the big vision was let's just combine the whole thing and do this at once and, and make it right. What was the difference between doing this here and maybe making it part of a whole new facility with entertainment and that sort of thing? What, what was the difference maker? Uh, there are a couple things. I mean, one would just be timing, which is, uh, you know, as we've talked about, we're, we're evaluating options for a new stadium potentially, and whether that's on the current site or somewhere else, but we weren't ready to make that decision at this point. Um, the second thing is, uh, you know, some teams do have that, and I think with, with mixed results, I think in certain cases there are positives to having both in one location, but there's also something about coming to a place where you know, this is where we practice, this is our space. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll have fans, as you all know, and, and partners here, but it's really about work and practice. Uh, and I think sometimes if you combine that uh, with more entertainment, that can be, uh, there can be some negatives with that. In the end, that facility will have served you guys for 36 years. So when you worked on designing this, how much did kind of planning for the future come to play, knowing that there may need to be tweaks on this at some point to keep the new place viable for a long time ago. Yeah, we, we built in some flexibility, so we have some different ways we can actually add on to the, the building that we're uh, going to be constructing. Um, and that's, you know, both for the football side as well as the business side. Uh, so there is flexibility, but also, you know, I don't see rosters getting that much bigger at this point, and it'd be hard to see coaching staffs get that much bigger. So. I, of course, could be wrong, but we do have flexibility built, built in if we need it. Were there any facilities that were more influential than others when you were looking at a variety of things throughout the country? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't see one facility that we said, oh, that's exactly what we want to build. So it was more taking pieces from uh, both Miami, Minnesota, uh, the Raiders. Um, you know, we saw a number of facilities where we saw some, some features that we, that we didn't like that much. And so it was both taking, taking things that we liked and things that we didn't like and then creating what was right for our team in this space. Greg, do you think brick and mortar things improve football or are they independent problems? Uh, I think they could be both. So I think if, um, you know, if we overbuilt something and it was too big and maybe too nice, that could, al that could almost have a, a negative impact. Um, so that was part of this, which is getting the spaces right. Um, we, this is gonna be really, it's gonna be a great facility, it's gonna be modern, um, but we didn't want it to be too big. And we wanted, again, for players to be in, in an area where they felt like this is their, these are their spaces. Uh, but I do think it sends a message to the team that we're willing to invest and we're gonna set a very high standard and our expectations for ourselves and for them is, is very high. As you, do construction on this, as you do construction on this facility, it feels like the roster's a little bit under construction and rebuilding. What are your expectations for this season? I'm encouraged by what I saw in training camp. I mean, you, you go back to um, when I spoke after the season, I said this is gonna be a, a critical off season and um, 
Uh, it's obviously too early to declare success, uh, but I, I've been really impressed with uh, what Sean and George have done in this offseason with the, the veteran players that we brought in through free agency or trades, our approach to the draft, what, what we did there. Um, from the first day of OTAs, the, the, just the enthusiasm, competitiveness, I mean, I'm sure you all could hear it on the field, it was different, and um, that carried through to training camp. Um, and that passion and intensity we saw it in, in the preseason games. So uh, it's a young team, um, but I've got, uh, I've got high expectations for, for what we can accomplish. The reality of the quarterback position is that the person becomes a face of the franchise. So in the last few months, what have been your impressions of, of Bo Nix and how he could grow into that sort of role? I've been really impressed with his poise and maturity. There's something about starting that many games in college that uh, obviously develops that, and, and I think he's, he's got some incredible traits. Um, it was great to see how he played in the first two preseason games. Um, I had a chance to call him after Sean announced that he'd be the starting quarterback. Had a, had a great uh, conversation with him then. You know, all rookies are going to go through some ups and downs in their first season, and I told him, we're going we're gonna to support you. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do on the field and, and the rest of this roster. Do you feel Sean energized in a different way? Because you're here almost every day. And what are your perceptions of Sean in year two with this, what he calls young and hungry and dangerous roster? Yeah, I do think he's energized. And, uh, you know, anytime year two is going to be a little, I think, a little easier than, than the first year where you've, you've come in an organization, you, you understand the organization, the history, the fans. Uh, he and, and um, George and myself have de developed a real um, sense of partnership and, and respect and communication. Uh, he's had a chance to reshape the roster in a way that he's really uh, excited about. So, um, yeah, it's been great to see his, his, uh, his approach. Uh, it was a great weekend. It was uh, terrific to celebrate Randy and, and to be able to do that with so many of our alumni there. Uh, I had a chance to meet a, a number of alumni that I hadn't met previously. So, so that part of it was just, it was terrific. Um, uh, that was our second year there after uh, being there for DeMarcus and, and hopefully we'll be there next year. Um, you know, we, we totally respect the process that the Hall of Fame voters have, but uh, uh, we think uh, Coach Shanahan is very deserving of a spot there. Um, when you look at uh, the impact that he's had on the game uh, with, I think, I believe he's the only coach who's won two, success, uh, su two successive Super Bowls and is not in the hall. Um, and then you look at his coaching tree of uh, six former assistants that are currently uh, head coaches. Uh, it's hard to argue with that track record. Greg, you mentioned alumni. We talked to, you know, we hear a lot of alumni now saying that it's been different since you guys got in here in terms of involving them. What does that kind of stem from? How early was that kind of identified as a priority for you guys uh, in terms of connecting with them? Yeah, I don't, it wasn't a point where we said, oh, this, you know, this has to be part of our program. It was really, we, we got here and, and really quickly understood. I remember, you know, the first days of training camp and there were, each day there were different alumni out here that were not here because they had to be, they were here because they wanted to be here. And, just having a chance to talk to them and hear about their experiences and their connection to the team, uh, pretty quickly we recognized that that was going to be a critical part of what we're doing.